What is up and welcome back guys. Today we finally get to see what is in this box that I've been keeping um, you guys from from the last four or five months. I think a couple of you guys actually guessed it when I was doing my roof, which was a long time ago, but today is the finally the day that you guys actually get to know that you got it right. So, some of it, you guys got clues from, well, if we look here, kind of gives um, a couple clues right here, but I think the biggest clue you guys um, guessed was this one that says covered ladder style tents. Well, that gives a kind of way. It is a rooftop tent for the Forester. So that's the whole reason we put on the rack is so we can put a tent on there um, and go do some overlanding. So with that being said, we get to go ahead and mount this on our A or B roof rack. And with that, we have a couple options actually. So these are the stock mounting bars. These are the A or B bars because, well, our A or B rack is actually built for tents, so which um, is the reason I chose it. And then we also have these guys, which I kind of just thought we might as well order and take a look at. I don't think we're using these, and I don't think we're using these. I think we're going to be using the A or B um, mounting brackets because, well, they're solid, and um, I have no worries of going off-roading with those and losing the tent. So, with that being said, I'll guys give you a kind of a little um, explanation of this tent before you guys actually see it on the here, because it's going to be a little bit before you do that. Um, so, this is one of the ones with the cover or with the annex on it, so that if I go skiing or something, you can actually put gear in there, or you can put a heater in there and it heats up the tent. Um, so, because of that, we actually got... Um, it kind of comes off this way, and I will be mounting it on the passenger side essentially, and that's because if you do park in a city or something, or if you park it like in front of your house and you need to dry it off, you can actually go just put the tent out and it'll go on your sidewalk or on your lawn or whatever. So that's my thought process of that. Um, with that being said, our mounting process is a little different than what they say because we have a kind of a unique situation because of this rack. Usually you'd mount it on roof rails um, that are kind of like on the outbacks, they have a rail that goes across, and a lot of times people just mount it on there. And because of that, usually you'd be flipping um, these, so these bars are what go um, under the tent, so they go across them. So usually they would end up being like this, or sorry, they'd end up being like this. And we're not doing that because, well, we got roof rail, or roof rack with um, bars on it, so we're flipping it this way, and we're installing it. So essentially the first step is just mounting these guys up with, um, we have some lots of supplied hardware, so we're gonna be doing that. So we're gonna mount that up first, um, or mount both of them up, and then we'll go ahead and put on the actual um, brackets that mount them together. So what we'll be using is these little sliders. So these little sliders right here go in these rails, and they then clamp on to here and clamp on the bar. So that is kind of our process for mounting it up. So I'm gonna go ahead, put these guys on. Um, nothing really interesting there. Just a couple, as I showed you guys, washers. So we'll do that, or a couple washers, couple of nuts and bolts. And then we can go ahead and get to the more fun stuff. So I went ahead and I pulled the mattress out because well, it makes it a lot lighter to move up there eventually, but it also allowed me to also remove a couple of things I forgot. So with that, the um, annex and then also the cover and the ladder. <laughs> so now this is going to make it a lot easier to put those um, mounting brackets in. So now I'm going to go ahead and do those. Aha, uh -huh, we have our rails mounted now. Um, those are actually probably going to be the most interesting and the hardest thing to put on because you got to reach around here through the tent and actually hold the, or bolt up the bolt, because when the nut's in here, it doesn't spin, obviously, because these hold them down. So, we've got them on, we've got our four nylon lock nuts and our four positions, and these bars are on solid. And then we've got ours down there, same thing. Um, and then these are just squared up to the edge, here and here. I think the next step um, is either putting on the ladder, but I think once we put this on, the ladder's on the like top of the, um, the tent, so we can put that on after, so let's just leave that off till we get it on the car. But I think our next step is then putting in these rails, which all we have to do is take one of these. I think I need to put a bolt on here. Uh, yes, we do need to put a bolt. I'm assuming this guy with a washer, slotting it in, it should go like that, I think. Nope, wrong bolt. These are ladder bolts. So I'm taking you on the learning process. We want these 
big ones, these 13 mils, and we want them to go in here. I don't know if we need a washer. I don't think we need a washer. No, we don't. And then once we put it in here, if we can take a look, kind of come around here, this locks in here, so now it's it only slides and the bolt doesn't spin freely, so just do that three more times and then, oh no, seven more times because we need two of these per mounting position. So, like that, and we're good to go. Okay, as I said, we're going to toss it on, um, but one thing I want to do is I want to take some of this extra rubber we had from the um, putting on the roof rack itself and use it to kind of insulate between the aluminum here and this guy, or and the um, roof rack itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to just cut some strips and then put it along this edge. So when it does sit down on the rack itself, it's not going to rub and kind of scratch it. It's going to sit on these nice um, thin little rubber sheets. So I'll cut these and then I think I'll just put them on with a little bit of glue and we should be good to go. There we go, so we should be able to toss this now on the car. So what I did is I took some of the rubber that we used for our um, rack, so these kind of gaskets, cut it up and ran it all along the um, bars so that when the bars sit on the crossbars themselves, we're not gonna have any issues with them um, scratching or even moving around because that is all stuck on with super glue so it isn't going anywhere. And then I figured out my positions where we're gonna have a crossbar so a bar that goes across. And so that, I just taped these guys down so when we flip it over, we're not gonna have them move all over so we should be able to just drop it right on and then bolt this up. My only concern is, as we mentioned, this rack is, isn't perfectly flat. So what we might have to do is kind of persuade it a little bit but we'll get there when we need to get there. And there we go, we have the shell of the tent on the Forcer. Check that out. So you can probably see why I picked this rack and picked this tent. They fit perfectly together. So as you see, the tent fits pretty much like flush with this bar. So once we put the like cover on and actually have the mattress in there, it's gonna just push it out a tiny bit more and pretty much level it off on both sides. I just went ahead, I measured everything. We got the same amount of distance from the metal platform to the end of the bar on both sides. So theoretically, we're completely centered, which is awesome. I checked it both on the front and on the back, so that means we're square. And then I put it so that we're pretty much pushed to the back of this bar, just supporting on here. So we do have this um, main bar as support, which is great. And also that means that when we move up to the front, we have plenty of room to put stuff in our front basket. So that's why I chose this is because Essentially, we do have a front basket, and I do want to have the ability to put stuff in the front of the Forester, which a lot of roof racks don't let you do, so that's the main reason I chose this touring rack. And then eventually we could put like a light bar down here, maybe some tracks up here, a tank, you know. Um, we also got plenty of space below. I was kind of thinking like a water tank we could do down there, which would be super cool, but these are just thoughts. Right now we need to focus on getting this on. And that means we got to go ahead, go to our collection of pieces, and use these guys. These are what I'm using. I'm actually gonna put another little piece of this rubber. Just put it essentially in here so that it acts as kind of like a grip on the bar so that when the bar um, prevents it from moving back and forth, it also prevents it moving side to side. So yeah, let's go ahead, get that on, and get this all mocked up before we take the car. We gotta spin it around and back it in here, and then we can go ahead, open the tent up, and put on the tent, put in the cover, and all that fun stuff. And just like that, we have it mounted up. So actually, I had it mostly mounted up, and then I forgot we have this guy, our special locking um, nuts for the bolts. So I had to take off some and put them on, but now we have them, um, if we look, we have a special locking one up here, and then we have both of them locking here. And so we have the bolts here, back, back there, there and there, so we have um, our mounting positions, and then we have the piece of rubber. So I tried to tighten them down just enough so that we're not over tightening them, um, but enough to kind of like start compressing the rubber on the top. Here, um, this one you can really see it, it's starting to compress it, but not too much that we um, squish it and go metal to metal. But this is a good way to check. I'm moving the car with the tent, so looking at that, we are probably good with our mounting pressure, so that is good. So I think the next thing we're gonna do is gonna go ahead 
and we're going to not open it. Open it's going to be the last scene. So you guys are going to have to wait until um, we go ahead and open it to see what it actually looks like. But I think the next thing is taking these little guys and putting on our ladder. So they go, if we look up on the top of here, this is getting pretty tall. I actually have a hard time. Look all the way at the end, there's some mounting holes. Um, so we'll take these brackets, mount on our ladder, and then I think we might put everything back in here and give it a go. After removing those paper stickers from the ladder, we got the ladder on. You guys can't see it from here. That's because it is up here. So when you are driving or when you have it stored, it sits on top like that. And it's just a telescoping ladder. We can take a look at the mounting. It's just a couple stainless steel brackets, which is nice to see. Um, using some stainless again. So it's essentially just a bracket here and a bracket over here and then bolted here and then I just put a spare washer in the middle so it doesn't move around and it rotates freely. So I think I have them perfect for tightness, um, just enough so that they're not going to move around but enough that we can swivel it and move it around. With that being done now, I think it's time to spin the Subaru around and get it so we can actually open it up and put on the final touches and test everything because you know we got to test this on the car tonight. So that means I got to get out of the way of this garage door opener and got to back the car in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it like this for now, tie up those um, straps right there and then pull the car around, back it in, back it where all this stuff is right now. So all this stuff, we're going to put it here and then we're going to go ahead and I think the first thing we're going to do is put the mattress back in and then put on the cover, um, text, test the um, annex, and then also um, put all the windows up and see how that does. So let's go ahead and flip this car around. Well, there we go. We got the Forester all turned around. Um, it's still making the great, wonderful noises it always does, but we got it turned around. Yellow fogs are super cool in the snow. Can't wait to actually do some driving with that. But anyways, I got the mattress in there. I just kind of pushed in there. I don't even know if it's in correctly, but you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna open it up first time on the Forester. So here we go. I'll find you guys a spot and we can go ahead and open it. I think I got most of it in frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open it. So I think the best way to do this is to hop on this rear wheel, grab the ladder, pull the ladder out, um, latch the ladder. I think that will work. And do we, oh yeah. Then we can just pull it like this and just go like that. And there we go. It feels like it's a lot bigger than um, I thought it was, but no, it's essentially double the size of the rack itself, which is awesome. Looks so cool. And now you can probably see what company I went with. Well, I went with Smart Tent, and they're actually local to Alberta. So that's one of the reasons I went with them is they have been tested and been used in Alberta for the last couple years now. So um, I felt good going with them. They're literally a, maybe an hour and a half drive away from my place. Um, and they actually delivered to me, which was great. But yeah, there we go. So we have, this is the Smart Tent Clubhouse in, I believe it's um, beige or tan, sorry, tan. Yeah, it's in tan, so dark tan. And yeah, there we go. So this is kind of the, um, where we are now. I think we might as well set it up all the way just to make sure everything checks out. And then we can go ahead um, and take some pictures, I guess. Take some B-roll before we go ahead and pack it up um, and put on the cover and make sure that all works. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, this version has like this entranceway and it also has the an um, annex as I was saying so We will work on that But I think the first thing is setting up this little room area because that's my door right there um, So we need to essentially bring this out and I think that's done by pulling out Yeah, there's a little u-bar here. We pull that out latch it in here and then um, that should pull this whole thing out So let's go ahead and do that that so there we go, we actually have this and as I said, it's just a simple U-bar. You can actually see it kind of sit in there and it goes along this back edge. All along here, goes up top, runs across and then back down into this spot. So I think we have that now. Um, what should we do? <laughs> Let's go ahead and 
put this room in. Let's install a room, guys, in my tent. No, let's put this um, annex in here, I think. And then we can go ahead, go in it, and set up the windows. Because essentially these guys go like that. So then we have a little shade cover, and then in the winter you can actually go ahead and kind of close these up so that you have even more insulation, essentially. Because this is gonna be a winter camping, too. And there we go, we have the annex on too, and I can't even get it in frame. This is so much bigger than you really expect when you think it's on your roof of your car, but damn, that's awesome. So, um, let's just take a quick look in here. So, the door's right here, well, obviously, and then once you're in here, it's still really dark. Um, I'll see if I can get some lights to show you guys, but once you're in here, you have a window over here, and a window over here. So with that you can open the windows or this is for more stuff with um, like if you're doing a rear mounted you could actually access the rear because this is like a trunk or a trunk access but for me that means I could theoretically access my car through here which is great and you guys can't see any of that. And then it's got some pockets on the side to store stuff and lots of little clips and stuff like um, right here. So we could actually go ahead and mount stuff, which is awesome. But yeah, let's go ahead, let's head back out. And now let's go ahead, since we have it pretty much done, let's finish it off by taking, we have a couple, actually we have a couple more things. We have the, this is just a bag for the annex, which is nice, you can store it. And then we also have these poles to hold up the windows. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I looked at the manual, I think I know what I'm doing. So let's see, we just kind of, clip them in there and um, that should be it. So let's try that. And there we go. So all you do is you put the little um, rod through the actual frame itself. And then you just run it all the way up and into these little holes where they are latched in. Same as on this side and same on this side. So um, another cool thing is here we can actually go ahead and put this here, if we're like wanting to keep this down all the time, we can do that, or we can just roll this up, or use this as an exit too. So there's lots of different options. Also, um, so the annex doesn't prevent you from installing these either. So it just has a little hole in it so you can go latch that together. So you can have this, you can have everything pretty much installed. Um, one thing I did notice is we gotta keep in mind, I guess when we're loading cargo in the front is, we do have a little point right up there, let's see, right there, where it does kind of stick out past the, um, the little carrier area. So if we do load something, it would have to be like low here, and then just kind of have a gap between there. And now that that's done, let's go ahead, I think we only have one thing left, and actually go in the tent. So here we go, first steps inside the tent. I, the mattress isn't, oh, that's, so weird. This just doesn't feel right. So as you can tell, it's really dark in here right now. Also, this feels so weird. It's so cool though. But anyways, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna first fix this mattress. And now that we got the mattress done, we should go ahead and open these windows. Um, I, I don't know what I'm doing, so. So there we go, we got one window open two windows open, and the third window open. We got some views of, you know, the Forster hood off to our right, and then in our major feature window here, we got pictures and pictures. We got a view of the STI. We ain't got pictures of the STI. But yeah, there we go, guys. We officially have our tent on our Forster. Check this out, guys. I am sitting on the roof of my Forster. Well, I'm sitting in a smart tent on, the ro on a rack made by ARB on a Subaru Forester. So there's a couple things in between. I'm not sitting on the roof of the Forester, but this is so cool. Look how much room. I can literally, like, I'm reaching the door right now. I'm way, I have so much room. You can fit like, they say two people, you can fit like three people and a dog or whatever. But yeah, this is awesome. So I was thinking about ending it here, but I don't think we'll do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna provide you guys with an awesome little edit. So we're gonna do a little cinematic. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead 
and see how fast this assembly is, or putting it back together, because I'm really interested to see um, how fast that is, and then just to make sure everything's good, we can package it all up and um, go camping very soon. Or not camping, go exploring. Camping, it's kind of boring. Exploring's where it's at. So I think because I live in Alberta, um, we got lots of stuff out west, and I go skiing, so we can go camping and go skiing, or we can go... Um, go forth and go um, to some of the stuff on Highway 40. If you guys live in Alberta, you know Highway 40 is like our kind of a off-road place. We can go up there. So we got plenty of options um, and it's not limited to the winter. So that's that's a big deal. Um, I can close the windows up and I can close this up. And I do have, I used to do um, a lot of like outdoor ed stuff. So I do have a minus 30 sleeping bag. So we're all good with that. And we can go camp and then go skiing or something. But as you can see, this is only the start of this build. This Forester, we have lots and lots planned for it. Adrian's whipping up some really cool stuff. Um, he's going to do some really cool things that also have never done, been done before. I know rooftop tents have been on Foresters, but this setup of the Airb rack, as far as I know, has not been done, which is really cool. But we're going to do some world first with the Forester um, drivetrain. Let's just leave it at that. Um, so we're going to do that. Of course, another big thing I want to do is uh, wheels and then um, tires and also a lift. So of course, we're probably going to go with just a kind of a standard lift right now. Um, but eventually, I do want to go long travel as some of my um, people I know that have been doing lifted forester for a long time have went. But we're going to just go ahead with probably some maybe a two to three inch lift and then run the biggest tires we can because who needs gas mileage, right? And then we'll have some great clearance for off-road and we can go keep up with Adrian. Adrian, I don't know, he says he's gonna get a rooftop tent, so maybe he will and we can go um, go on some off-road adventures with him too. But his car and my car are kind of the start of the, I guess, the off-road build. We both have a race car and we both have a off-road build. So yeah, that is kind of the plan for the Forester, but as I said, this is only the beginning. So if you guys are new, if this is new, you're one of your first videos you've watched from me, I would definitely recommend go subscribing um, because we have, as I said, STI content and we have this new build that's starting up. And if you guys have any comments or questions, um, leave them down below because I watch those and I try to answer every single one I see. Um, but if you have suggestions, yeah, definitely leave them below and we can see what we can do about um, adding them to the Forester or, or if you have something for the STI. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this little edit before we get to putting this all back together in its little box on the roof. enjoyed that little bit of a um, cinematic edit but anyways now it's the time where we're gonna essentially take it all down because I want to see how fast I can do that so let's pretend I've been camping and now I want to go travel somewhere else well this is actually really nice this door here because you can take all the stuff out so let's say I've taken all the stuff out and I have the full tent set up with the um, auxiliary area and all that done up so let's go ahead and take it down and see how long that takes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna obviously time lapse it because it'll take a while, but we'll also run a timer in the bottom and then we'll see how fast I can actually go ahead and take this down because I think it'll be pretty interesting to figure that out. Anyways, that's gonna be probably the last thing we do, but I'll catch up to you guys at the end of this.
and time. There we go. So we have the whole thing in there. That only took 15 minutes, I think. My camera overheated for one, but I quickly turned it back on. So I think about a 15 minutes, and I didn't count that. I still gotta fold that up, but 15 minutes for the core um, assembly, or putting it back. Um, I didn't put anything in, so what you can do is you can actually take like the rods, and you can even take the um, annex and put it all in there, but I think I'm just gonna put it in the car because essentially I want to put some if you guys know Morax um, in these back windows like in, on the inside and that's where I can mount everything which would be great But yeah, there we go all Wrapped up in inside or inside its bag waterproof and ready to go and it doesn't make Doesn't look like overly big on the Forster actually, which is awesome. So yeah, I can't wait to actually go out and shoot some video and photos outside when we get like a blizzard or something with this. There we go. I just put the annex back in its bag. It wasn't that hard once I um, figured out what corners I needed to fold. Anyways, that is going to definitely be it for today's video. Um, we spent quite a bit of time actually doing this, which I mean, I'm not mad because it is awesome and I can't wait to go camping and adventuring and off-roading with it. So yeah, that's definitely worth the eight hours almost I've put into it, but that's gonna definitely be it for today. So I think after this video, we're gonna have a couple things with the STI and a couple things with the Forester before we go on a couple good adventures. But I hope you guys enjoyed this really long journey of putting this tent on. Videos up from, I think, this past May were all leading up to this, doing the roof, making sure that the roof wasn't gonna rust, and then going ahead and going and putting the roof rack on, doing the interior. I'm still gonna do a really good um, edit with that, but we're gonna see that probably a little bit later when we do some detailing on the interior. But all of that was leading up to this tent because, well, this tent was gonna be kind of the capstone of the project because, well, to put that on or to take that off, we would have to do redo everything we've done. So I just wanted to make sure we did it right this time and did the stuff that I wanted to do leading up to it, like the interior and stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you haven't watched those already, definitely recommend it, especially the interior one. Um, we wrapped my headliner and we also did the trim, which is awesome. And then maybe also the A or B roof rack install because that is a custom job because this roof rack is not made for this car. So yeah, maybe watch all those if you're um, inclined and in seeing how the, we got to this point. And that's gonna be it for today. So as always, peace out and stay humble. Oh,